Good evening and welcome to today's lecture. I want to teach you how to plot the Piper diagram. To plot the Piper diagram, go to Plot, come to Specialized, select the Piper plot, select this, then select your cations and anions that you want to plot. Six of them. I select this, I select. And so you press, you click on that. These are optional tags, depends on what you are checking for. If you had the total dissolved solid, you could select this and they pick the total dissolved solid. And whatever you want to name your sample, you could also name coming here to pick an option. So as when you've done that, click on OK and this is our piper plot a piper plot showing us the distribution of the anions and the cations in water but before we go further it might interest you to know what the piper plot really is a piper plot which is also known as a piper diagram is just a graphical representation used in um, chemistry um, geochemistry and hydrogeology to display the chemical composition of water samples. It, also, it shows the major ion concentrations of a water sample, typically in milli equivalents per liter on a trilinear plot. Typically, your Piper plot displays the following, the, 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 the following information. The, it displays your cations, the positively charged ions, this um, on this triangular plot, on this triangle on the on the left bottom corner, you you have your you have your sodium, you have your calcium, you have your magnesium. You then have your the one for your anions where you have your chloride, you have your sulfide and you have your bicarbonate. And then you have this diamond-shaped field in the center showing the concentration of every of these components, your both, your, both your cation and your anion. So the fiber plot is usually useful to identify water type, whether it is fresh, it is seawater or it is brackish, but it's also used in determining the dominant ions in the water sample, which we are going to read in this, which we are going to show in this video. So how do we interpret this um, Piper plot? You see, if the data point falls near the sodium vertices, the water is sodium dominated. If it falls near the calcium vertices, it is calcium dominated so wherever it falls that ion dominates the water so now in the case we have here our our data point fall between magnesium and sodium so it is both magnesium and sodium dominated in in the cation is in the in the in the in the cation side then when you come to the anion we see it falls more to our data point falls more to the um to the to the um to the sulfate side to the sulfate vertices if you notice so it is sulfate dominated so now, when you look at this, um, so this the diamond shaped field is what sums it up, and then if it now when it falls, when it falls towards the top or towards the bottom, towards the top you have your water to be alkaline 
towards the bottom, you say it is acidic. In our situation now, it falls towards the bottom, so we have our water to be acidic. So when it is in the middle, you have a balanced composition. If it falls towards the left or to the right, then you have, if it falls towards the left, you have it more dominated by the anions. It falls towards the right, um, sorry, to the to the left, you have it more of um, cation. It, it's more dominated by cations. So, if the if the if the water for your water type, if your data point falls towards the middle, you, you typically say that your water is um, fresh. If your data point falls towards the sodium and chloride vertices you say your water is in um, seawater if your water the, if the data um, point falls between this um, fresh water and seawater field then you say it is brackish brackish so um i believe you've been able to learn some things about the piper plot let me know in the comment section what you would love to learn next. And if you have any questions about the Piper plot, please also feel free to let me know. Thank you.